In this video, I'm going to talk about a very, very special book that I read recently. It's called Educated by Tara Westova. It's a story where some specific aspects of her life have been highlighted. And I'm, in this video, I'm going to talk only about the highlights. And this book is not just a story. It's an experience by itself. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why it's, uh, it's a very unique experience as such. She grew up in a mountain in rural Idaho. She worked in a junkyard. She's never been to school before and she ended up getting a PhD from Cambridge. Her mother was a herbal specialist and a midwife. Her dad worked in the junkyard. Tara has three sisters and th three brothers and one sister, uh, Richard, Sean and Luke and one sister called Audrey. So the, 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 the general ideology in the family was basically uh, her dad believed in the Illuminati. So he was very paranoid about uh, hospitals, uh, the government and um, public schools. Uh, this also had partly to, to do with uh, the Ruby Ridge incident of 1992. Uh, the, I'll share a link in the description of this video where it gives you details about the Ruby Ridge incident. Uh, at home, there was some kind of uh, intramural learning that was going on always because Tara's mother believed that the kids have to be uh, have to have a little bit of exposure when it comes to education, and uh, Dad's belief in Illuminati was so extreme to the point. Uh, when Tara's mother met with an accident, uh, she had a serious brain injury and her dad refused to take uh, her to the hospital. Uh, and, this, and a very similar case was with Tara when she met with an accident and her dad yet again refused to take her for treatment to the hospital because of his belief. So Tara's brother, Sean, he was a nightmare. Initially, he, so in the beginning, he was very, very caring and supportive. But it turned out later on, he gained a very strong reputation for mental and physical abuse. Uh, so he basically abused Tara, uh, his wife, uh, Emily, uh, two of his ex-girlfriends called Erin and Sally. So, so Sean uh, started physically abusing Tara when he spotted Tara with this person called Charles, who Tara met while she was performing at a theater. So after learning of this incident, uh, Tara's brother, Tyler, uh, advised Tara to go take to take go and take the ACT test to apply to BYU. Tyler to 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 speak a little bit about Tyler. Tyler was a very different. He was a kind of an oddball uh, by himself. He liked to read a lot. He definitely liked to learn, uh, and uh, he was a very organized person, very very quiet. Uh, he also owned perhaps the only boombox that Tara had ever seen in the whole of Idaho, uh, especially where they lived. And uh, incidentally, between 1991 and 1992. Tyler managed to go to school for that one year, except when, her, uh, when his dad heard about the uh, Weaver uh, incident, he decided to pull him off school. And of course, over time, uh, Tyler also decided to leave home for the betterment of his life. And now Tara had to uh, uh, take the ACD test. And she's never, been, uh, she's never been to school before. She's never written an exam before. She, she, she now knows that she needs to score a 27 to get into BYU. She starts preparing for the test. Uh, she finds it very, very hard to understand certain concepts and uh, she takes a little bit of help from her mother. But every time she saw her dad, she had to hide the books because her dad was against book and learning. He thought it was against God. And uh, he never believed basically in books uh, and theory. And uh, when Tara showed up in the exam hall, uh, she didn't know what a bubble sheet was. And uh, when she asked the teacher what, what, what a bubble sheet was and what she was supposed to do with it, because everybody else in the exam hall knew what a bubble sheet was, the teacher thought Ta Tara was playing a prank. And uh, anyway, eventually Tara ended up scoring a 28 and uh, she, got, she, she was ready to apply to BYU, but she didn't know how to apply to BYU. So she took uh, the help of Tyler and Tyler eventually helped Tara apply to apply to BYU. And she not only got admission into BYU, she also got an admission with a scholarship uh, into BYU. And that's, when, that's how things began for Tara. So uh, when Tara uh, came to BYU, she had a very big culture shock because uh, Tara grew up in this very uh, conservative, orthodox uh, place uh, back in the mountains of Idaho. And when she comes to BYU, she, has, she, she sees this whole different world of meeting friends and they, they, they wore different kinds of clothes and they stored food in the fridge. 
and this was a culture shock and that was apparently storing the storing food in the fridge was apparently against uh, some of the lord's commandments to the point tara's dad thought uh, drinking milk was sinful so tara's in tara's house people had to drink milk uh, drink uh, eat cereal uh, and mix cereal with water so that's how they all used to do stuff because of her dad's beliefs and uh, here in uh, BYU she has such a huge culture shock uh, with her with her, with her friends because what was normal what was normal in the normal world of north american school and college was super different and extreme to tara who grew up in a completely different place and uh, during class uh, when 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 she saw professor when she, when she saw other students asking questions uh, tara decided to ask a question but unfortunately uh, the only time she asked a question she she fired the wrong ammunition she uh, when the professor asked tara to read something in the textbook uh she was reading and she saw a word written italic and she didn't know what the word means so she basically asked in front of the whole class what this word means and there was pin drop sense in the whole class the professor tightened his lips and decided to move on with his notes and uh, after the class Vanessa her classmate came and told Tara this is not a joke you cannot be joking about it and basically uh, Tara had to go to the computer and look up what the word holocaust meant <laughs> so that was the deal regarding that and uh Uh, in the same school in BYU, she took a class. Uh, uh, she took psychology 101, and in that class is the first time she heard of a term called bipolar. And uh, when the professor was talking about the symptoms of bipolar, she could relate to everything that he said basically because she basically said this was dad. She basically she literally took notes in her notebook saying this is dad. This is basically my dad, and he has all he has all these symptoms. And uh, after class, she had a discussion with a friend. and during the discussion the the, uh, the the ruby ridge incident suddenly came up and tara was familiar with that because her dad had acquainted uh, this whole ruby ridge incident, ruby ridge incident to tara for a different reason when tara was younger and uh, when tara looks up the whole ruby ridge incident she finds out that the incident had a completely different agenda uh, with what had happened there but because tara's dad believed in illuminati he thought uh, the government was behind just like how the government was behind uh, Randy Weaver he thought the government is also behind uh, the Westovers Tara Westover the family because uh, they lived in the same place uh, in Idaho so uh, the link for the Ruby Ridge incident and the Illuminati is given in the description below this video so you can totally check that out and uh, so now Tara basically picked uh, her electives which is uh, geography and uh, comparative politics and uh, when she met a professor of jewish history her professor asked uh, tara why did she pick jewish history and tara by mistake blurted out that it was because she wanted to learn more about the holocaust and the professor assumed tara went to high school where usually people learn about the holocaust and when he learned that tara had never been to high school and she was straight up uh, right now in university he got a shock so he be uh, and when he asked her why she sara had to tell him her professor that uh, her parents didn't believe in public education or education in general so this is why she has to she has, she's very curious right now and she wants to learn all these new things so her professor was pretty surprised uh, uh, with tara so he says uh, to see what her capability is uh, her professor encourages tara to apply to the university of cambridge where this professor uh, conducts uh, a study abroad program of some sort So he encourages Tara to apply to the University of uh, Cambridge. So once Tara gets into Cambridge University, she writes an essay comparing Edmund Burke and Hubelus under the guidance of Prof. Steinberg, and she writes one of the best essays Prof. Steinberg has ever seen in the last thirty years of his teaching in Cambridge. So he encourages Tara to apply for for graduate school either in Cambridge or Harvard, and. Uh, He even offers Tara to pay the full tuition fee for Cambridge if if she's going to continue studying there, and Tara initially denies it, but then she applies for the Gates Cambridge Scholarship. Uh, so for people who apply to Oxford, I think it's called the Rhodes Scholarship, and for Cambridge it's called the Gates Cambridge Scholarship. So Tara applies for the Gates Cambridge Scholarship and she gets it, and uh, she writes another essay about John Stuart Mill's uh, something along the lines of philosophy and. Yet again, the professor is extremely satisfied with the quality of the paper. So he says, if if your dissertation can, if your PhD, if your dissertation can match the same quality, you, you are ready to apply for a. You can very easily apply for a PhD in Cambridge, and uh, she does. Uh, she does end up uh, applying for a PhD in Cambridge. She gets in and she completes her PhD uh, in Cambridge. And having said all of this, Tara is completely a different person right now. Let me tell you why. 
Tara was no more uh, an orthodox conservative person. Uh, all her experiences, uh, all these experiences basically transformed her. Especially, especially her Cambridge experience gave her a lot of confidence. She started getting vaccinations which her family did not believe in. She started making new friends. She started buying new kind of clothes, more modern clothes than what she believed in before because her family's ideologies were extreme and very, very different. And uh, in, B in BYU, she felt very, very out of place. She thought she belonged to the junkyard because she's never been to high school. She was short of confidence. And, and BYU was this completely different world. And she never spoke to her friends about her past. She barely had any friends. She tried making friends, but nothing lasted basically. And here in Cambridge, all these experiences transformed her to the point. She was very confident. She spoke, uh, she, she made new friends. She spoke to all of her friends about her past how her dad owned a junkyard, how her mom, her mom was a, a midwife and a herbal specialist. And she, she felt that right now she's this completely different person and everything changed for the better. The newly transformed Tara has this ability to think and education being one of the biggest contributing factors in her life completely transformed her story to what it is today. If you enjoy the story, thanks a lot for watching this. And if you're still watching this, thanks a lot for your time. I hope you enjoy this story and I hope if and when you read this book, you enjoy it as much as I did. Uh, it's an incredible book. Please let me know in the comment section what are, what are, what are the specific highlights that you found very interesting uh, in your experience. Uh, please let me know and uh, thanks for your time.